Beloved, hear the word of God. Feel the spirit. Join our service every Sunday at 10 a.m. as we connect with the word of God. See you Sunday, and to God be the glory. Sisters and brothers, all in faith and in struggle, good morning. Here are your announcements for Palm Sunday. Your generous contributions help support the mission of the Abyssinian Church. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've changed our online giving platform to PushPay. Simply text ABBY to 77977. That's Abby, A-B-Y, to 77977. Or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give by Zelle through your bank account at 917-710-7933. You can mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and your generosity. We encourage you to be in prayer for members of our faith community requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones who are sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names will appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. An Abyssinian's virtual noonday Bible study with Reverend Pamela Mason will take place tomorrow, Monday, April the 11th at noon. Please see on your screen join details. This information is also posted at abyssinian.org. The final Bible study of the 2022 Lenten season takes place on Wednesday, April the 13th this has been a season of Bible study, prayer, and fasting. We've offered scriptures to strengthen your witness of Christ and prayer starters, all of which are posted at abyssinian.org. We invite you to join us in Let Us Pray weekly conference call. This prayer line will take place Thursday, April the 14th at 7 a.m., 9.30 p.m. Please see Zoom and dial in details on your screen and by visiting the church's website under Worship Services. And sisters and brothers, we encourage each of you to participate in the 2022 Holy Week services. See Holy Week special services on your screen now and by visiting the church's website, abyssinian.org. Immediately following this morning's worship service, our Sunday School Ministry will present a Palm Sunday program. Their production will take place in the vestry, so you can watch the program in person, or you can tune in via Zoom. See access details on your screen now. Join Abyssinian Deacon Dr. Henry McCurtis as we learn to identify the target symptoms of depression and anxiety and develop key strengths to make these symptoms less severe. You can tune into these conversations on Wednesday, April the 20th and April 27th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Join details are on your screen and by visiting the church's website 
abyssinian.org. And live in concert, the Abyssinian Baptist Church presents Grammy-nominated chamber ensemble Amani Wins as a part of the Gateway Music Festival on Thursday, April the 21st at 7.30 p.m. You don't want to miss the Amani Wins return to Abyssinian featuring our very own member, Monica Ellis. This performance is free and open to the public, but tickets are required. Visit abyssinian.org to register and to reserve your seat. We wish you a very powerful Holy Week ahead. Your generous contributions help support the mission of the Abyssinian Church. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've changed our online giving platform to PushPay. Simply text ABBY to 77977. That's ABBY, A-B-Y, to 77977. Or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give by Zelle through your bank account at 917-710-7933. You can mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and your generosity. We encourage you to be in prayer for members of our faith community requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones who are sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names will appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. An Abyssinian's virtual noonday Bible study with Reverend Pamela Mason will take place tomorrow, Monday, April the 11th at noon. Please see on your screen join details. This information is also posted at abyssinian.org. The final Bible study of the 2022 Lenten season takes place on Wednesday, April the 13th. This has been a season of Bible study, prayer, and fasting. We've offered scriptures to strengthen your witness of Christ and prayer starters, all of which are posted at abyssinian.org. We invite you to join us and Let Us Pray weekly conference call. This prayer line will take place Thursday, April the 14th at 7 a.m., 9 30 p.m. Please see Zoom and dial in details on your screen and by visiting the church's website under worship services. And sisters and brothers, we encourage each of you to participate in the 2022 Holy Week services. See Holy Week special services on your screen now and by visiting the church's website, abyssinian.org. Immediately following this morning's worship service, our Sunday School Ministry will present a Palm Sunday program. Their production will take place in the vestry, so you can watch the program in person, or you can tune in via Zoom. See access details on your screen now. Join Abyssinian Deacon Dr. Henry McCurtis as we learn to identify the target symptoms of depression and anxiety and develop key strengths to make these symptoms less severe. You can tune into these conversations on Wednesday, April the 20th and April 27th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. 
Join details are on your screen and by visiting the church's website, abyssinian.org. And live in concert, the Abyssinian Baptist Church presents Grammy-nominated chamber ensemble Amani Wins as a part of the Gateway Music Festival on Thursday, April the 21st at 7.30 p.m. You don't want to miss the Amani's Wins return to Abyssinian, featuring our very own member, Monica Ellis. This performance is free and open to the public, but tickets are required. Visit abyssinian.org to register and to reserve your seat. Your generous contributions help support the mission of the Abyssinian Church. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've changed our online giving platform to PushPay. Simply text ABBY to 77977. That's ABBY, A-B-Y, to 77977 or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give by Zelle through your bank account at 917-710-7933. You can mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and your generosity. We encourage you to be in prayer for members of our faith community requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones who are sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names will appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. An Abyssinian's virtual noonday Bible study with Reverend Pamela Mason will take place tomorrow, Monday, April the 11th at noon. Please see on your screen join details. This information is also posted at abyssinian.org. The final Bible study of the 2022 Lenten season takes place on Wednesday, April the 13th this has been a season of Bible study, prayer, and fasting. We've offered scriptures to strengthen your witness of Christ and prayer starters, all of which are posted at abyssinian.org. And live in concert, the Abyssinian Baptist Church presents Grammy-nominated chamber ensemble Amani Wins as a part of the Gateway Music Festival on Thursday, April the 21st at 7.30 p.m. You don't want to miss the Amani's Wins return to Abyssinian, featuring our very own member, Monica Ellis. This performance is free and open to the public, but tickets are required. Visit abyssinian.org to register and to reserve your seat. We wish you a very powerful Holy Week ahead.
I was glad when they said unto me, let us go in to the house of the Lord. Give God praise for this Palm Sunday, and I'm delighted to see you in the house of prayer. Welcome to those who are viewing us on live stream. Thank God for your participation in our worship service this morning. And now, let us worship God together by praying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when he taught them to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. All glory, Lord, and honor to Jesus Christ, our King.
Let the church say amen. amen. I want to say to you as we assume an attitude of prayer that this morning our prelude was played for us and our organ is being played for us by Dr. Gregory Hopkins. Dr. Hopkins. Dr. Hopkins is one of the finest musicians in this nation. And he is the resident uh, musician, organist, and choir director at the Convent Avenue Baptist Church. But he's been visiting with us the last few Sundays, and we're happy to salute and celebrate him this morning. Amen. Show him some love and appreciation. <laughs> Call your family and friends close to you if you can and if you're able. For those of you who are alone, just stretch your hands out to God as we prepare to look to God in prayer. We're having services for Brother Roderick Covington. Those services will take place here tomorrow, Monday, April 11th. The final viewing is at 10 a.m. and the service is at 12 noon. Reverend Covington is a colleague and served for many years as a New York State trooper. And we will celebrate his life tomorrow. The service is at 12 noon here at Abyssinian. And we will remember and celebrate the life of Sister Nancy Lane on Saturday, March 14th. You will hear more about that. Sister Lane was one of the distinguished African-American women who made her way not only in corporate America, but also in doing great work in the artistic world here in our city. Pray for the family of Jennifer Tolliver. It's a young woman who last week was killed when a car ran into her and her six-year-old son on 145th Street. Sister Tolliver was related to our departed member, Addie Greer, and we want to ask for prayers for the family. I want you to continue to pray for Deacons Kelvin and Gwinnett Reese. Deacon Kelvin Reese lost his sister to death, and uh, service was held on yesterday, but keep them in your prayer. And uh, beloved, our list is long. I want you to remember, however, Brother Philip Smith. I don't know if Philip, he may not be. He's going to have heart surgery tomorrow, and it's pretty serious. Every surgery is serious, but the heart surgery is really challenging. And uh, pray for him. He's a good member. You remember his brother was killed by the police over in London, England. Another one of those... Uh, racially, we believe, motivated killings. Remember, if you will, in prayer, Brother Forrest Murphy, uh, who is in Isabella Nursing Home, along with Brother Christopher Gowan, who is there also. The Gowan family is deep in our church, and Chris and his mother, his sainted mother, were good members of our church. Chris is a good member. His mother was a very good member. Brother Leon Eastman, is in assisted living care in New Jersey. Keep him in your prayers. And Catherine Wade, the mother of Cynthia Wade, who leads our Senior Ladies Usher's ministry, is recovering from spinal surgery. Her birthday was yesterday. And uh, pray for Cynthia Wade as she's the caretaker for her mother and father. So beloved, along with names like Thelma Mason, Deacon Thelma Mason, Shelley Westbrooks Lassiter, Sister Catherine McPherson, Deacon Quincy Gold, Isabella Mims, Patricia Pates Eaton, Diana Dykes, Martha Goodman, keep them all in your prayers. And there's another long list that should be on our website. And for those of you watching on live stream, it is on our live stream. Of course, we pray for our sisters and brothers in the Ukraine and all across the world who are facing challenging situations. And so we're going to call now on uh, Reverend Dr. Rashad, Stephen Rashad Hoggart, to come and lead us in prayer. Let the church say amen. amen. i 
everybody. Let's sing glad. Glad to be in the service one more time. He didn't have to let me live. Didn't have to let me live. Said I'm glad to be in the service one more time. To be in the service, glad to be in the service, glad to be in the service. One more time, oh, he didn't have to. No, no, let me live. Said I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. brothers all in faith and in struggle, good morning. Amidst the laundry list of death and darkness and sadness, we are here. We are glad to be in the service one more time. We thank God for this opportunity to worship God in spirit and in truth on this Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is about a humble king who rides his way into a city to die for his enemies. A leader who enters a city to serve and not dominate. A carpenter from Nazareth who builds tables of inclusion. So we should all have the courage as we seek to go to God in prayer to be more like Jesus, to get off our high horses and be like Jesus. But this morning when we pray for one another and the names on this list, we also have to give God thanks and praise this morning for another triumphal entry this week. Can we thank God for the triumphal entry of Katanji Brown Jackson? Well, we can do a little bit better than that. grateful to God for her triumphal entry, and we are grateful for the shoulder she stands on. I can't help but think about Constance Baker Motley on this morning and the road she paid for her. So we're glad to be in the service, and we thank God for an opportunity to reflect on how we can be more like Jesus, more like this carpenter, more like this leader, more like our king. Let us bow our heads in prayer. In the stillness of this moment, eternal God, our parent, we are reflective on all of your many blessings in our lives. We're still in this moment to think of the ways in which you have brought us and taught us, sustained us and led us. You have given us the strength to endure. Each of us in this room, each of us across the various platforms face our individual challenges, burdens, questions, doubts, vicissitudes of life. But amidst all of these struggles and disappointments and concerns, Amidst our afflictions, we pause now to give you thanks for being our friend, for being our supporter, for being our guide and our teacher. We thank you, dear God, because we can say with conviction that you have enabled us to put one foot in front of the other to see what the end will be, to continue marching and living and exploring and loving and learning. Help us in these moments 
to adopt a Christ-like mentality, to be more loving, to be more affirming of everyone, to be intentional about letting our light shine amidst the darkness and the chaos of this world, to stand boldly in your grace, knowing that we are never alone. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy towards us and how it shines within us, even in those moments we can't see our own way. We give you thanks and praise for the opportunity to come to you and express our concerns. You know what we stand in the need of. You know the struggles that we face. You know the dilemmas, the mountains we have to climb. But remind us in your own subtle way that you have promised to be with us, that you have promised to be a support system, that you have promised to sustain us and hold our hand each step of the way. You have heard the names on this list of those who are facing bereavement, those who are sick, those who will have to go in for procedures, those who are looking for employment opportunities. Dear God, work through us that we might be your vessel to help support our sisters and brothers each step of the way. We ask that you might bless us on today so that we can be a blessing. Give us the courage, dear God, to live our lives, to boldly proclaim that there is a reality in serving you. So help us, dear God, to serve you in the living of our days, how we engage with our sisters and brothers, the causes that we stand for, those who we love without condition, as you have loved us. Oh, dear God, help us to grow in your grace. Bless this, the Abyssinian Baptist Church, for 214 years. It's been here. It's been a light. It's been an oasis. It's been a source of strength to all who come through these doors. But empower us that when we leave here today, we just will not have service, but we will take whatever we have learned, whatever that has been deposited within us, to go back out into the world, to the streets of our lives, to make sure that we are witnesses for you in how we go about living our lives. Bless us as we go through this holy week. We ask that you might continue to empower Dr. Butts, give him strength this morning as he proclaims your word, that it might challenge us, that it might empower us, that it might give us a sense of identity to know that we are always connected to you. So bless this service, bless all who are here, hear our individual and collective prayers, shine a light within us and grant us a measure of your peace that we might have the courage to be your ambassadors for peace. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. And for his sake we pray. Amen.
of you watching on live stream and when you go back some of you will look at the service again the announcements and uh, many of those listed in sick and shut in prayer and bereavement will be repeated before the service and at the end of this service today so please focus your attention there if you missed anything and to our senior members if you would like to attend Sunday worship service we will distribute attendance credentials in the vestry on the fourth Sunday, April 24th. And for further information, please contact Sister Clayton at extension 305. So those credentials will be distributed on the fourth Sunday, April 24th. That's to our senior members. Let's see, we've got some, here they say, uh, Teresa Tucker and Deborah Tucker, are y'all here? Tucker Barrow? Right where? Right there? Yeah, Deborah. Welcome, Deborah. We're glad to see her. She's come all the way from Colorado, and she was a good usher in our church for a long time. 
and we're delighted that she's back with us today. Uh, we're welcoming today uh, Dr. Tanya Matthews and her assistant, Brother Eric McCall. Are they here? Oh, right here. <laughs> Dr. Matthews is the CEO of the International African American Museum that is slated to open in Charleston, South Carolina next year. Welcome, sister. God bless you. I don't know if Latricia Don Pinnell is here this morning. I don't see her, but Latricia, those of you who know Don and her two daughters, Latricia is uh, going to get married in June. Amen. Yeah. She grew up here in the church, and she is the granddaughter of the late Esther McCall and daughter of Yvonne Pinnell. So congratulations to Latricia. And uh, Deacon Larry and Deacon Olga Dea said their grandsons are visiting with them this weekend from Tyrone, Georgia. <laughs> and it's in celebration of a birthday and graduation from high school. So Damani. Damani is 18, Javian is 16, and Dane is 15. So we welcome them, three fine-looking young men. Amen? God bless you. All right, brother and sister Plummer, I'm glad to see you all this morning. You look well. You know, you're eating all right. You're doing okay, both of you. Amen. All right. Um, I want to say a special word of appreciation to Chester Higgins for his book on the Sacred Nile. That's a great book, beloved, and if you don't have one, I encourage you to get one as soon as you can. It's a wonderful conversation piece, a good, uh, what do they call it, coffee table book, and it's about our experiences in terms of being an African people in religion, and it focuses a lot on Abyssinian, of course. So we hope that you will pick that up. And to my left here, Elder Mack told me that Brother James Hall, is that you, Brother Hall? They say that Brother Hall is one of our greatest gospel artists. And uh, he has a song that most people know, God Wants a Yes. And the choir, his worship and praise choir, he's got over 25 years of experience in uh, gospel music. So show some love and welcome Brother James Hall. We celebrate Palm Sunday, and of course, Holy Week is coming up, and I want to encourage you to go to your website and check out all of our Holy Week services. We start Thursday with Monday, Thursday. Good Friday will be right here. Mother Zion is coming over, and we're going to have our Good Friday service that will begin here at 11 o'clock. Now, Monday, Thursday will be at 7 p.m. Right here, we'll celebrate communion. And this afternoon, and in person, and it's via Zoom. Also, we will have a Palm Sunday program presented by our Sunday School Ministry. So I'm encouraging you all to tune in uh, for that Palm Sunday program. The production will take place in the vestry for those of you who want to go down. And you can watch the, person, uh, the program in person, or you can tune in via Zoom or on your phone. You can see the details are on the screen now for those of you watching. And for those of you in service, you can go down or you can tune in by Zoom. That's after service today, our Palm Sunday program. Reverend Mason, is she up here in the sanctuary? She may be downstairs. I don't see a time on here, so I can give you right after service, all right? Right after service. God bless you. Now, a couple of things. Later on this, uh, tomorrow, Reverend William Barber will be down at Trinity Wall Street, and he will be calling together a rally to discuss the campaign for social justice here in the United States. 
And uh, then on Tuesday, April 12th, he's coming here to Abyssinia. And I'm calling together clergy and all other interested persons to meet with him here at 11 a.m. Now, how many of you saw that three private citizens, uh, entrepreneurs, business persons, paid $55 million each to go up to the space station? Uh, 55 times 3, what's that, 165, is that right? Close. And um, a rat done bit my sister Nell, and Whitey's on the moon. Her face and arms began to swell, but Whitey's on the moon. I can't pay these doctor bills, but Whitey's on the moon. And 20 years from now, I'll be paying them still and Whitey's on the moon. There must be a call for moral and social justice in our nation. Uh -huh. yes, sir. And I think that uh, William Barber and the Poor People's Campaign is on the right track. I spoke with him the other day, <clears throat> and he told me that <clears throat> a group of poor whites who live in the hills of West Virginia were marching on Joe Manchin. Now, if there was anything that's right that's happening now, that's it. Because Joe Manchin and what's the other one, Simca and those people are really off the ranch. And so I want you to come out on Tuesday morning at 11, those who can. And many of us will be working, but those who can, and it's a special call to clergy to be here to hear Dr. Bob. I want us to get with this movement because I think it's important. It's not only dealing with the federal legislature, Adam Clayton Powell Jr., but it's also dealing with the masses of people who march and demonstrate black and white, Martin Luther King Jr. This is a part of our great legacy and tradition. And for those who tried to push Martin and Adam apart, I say no. For those who try to push Adam, Martin, and Malcolm apart, I say no. They were all on the right path. Adam was Mr. Civil Rights before Martin Luther King Jr. was born almost. And then Martin Luther King Jr. had his marching feet come across the South, and uh, Malcolm X stirred up the masses in the urban ghetto. Don't be faked out, beloved. The struggle continues. And so if you can, on uh, Tuesday, April 12th at 11, come and join me with Reverend Dr. William Barber on the Poor People's Campaign so that we can understand the full thrust of the movement. Amen. Amen. We got some big cultural events coming up at Abyssinian. We have Imani Wins. They did not win the Grammy. But as I said, and as the preacher said, it's just nice to be nominated. And uh, they are coming here on April 21st. It's a free concert. They haven't been here in over seven years, and we want to hear them. Monica Ellis, one of our great members, is going to be in that group. She's the bassoonist. And I hope <clears throat> that you will come out. It's free, and uh, you'll have a great evening of music. That's 7.30 p.m., April 21st, here in the Abyssinian Sanctuary. And, beloved, I'm happy to announce that one of our members and friends, Courtney Vance. How many of you know who Courtney Vance is? Amen. And the AMC Networks, they're going to host a special screening. Uh, Courtney's got a new series called 61st Street, and it's premiering this month on AMC Networks. And the screening is going to take place Tuesday, April 12th. And uh, it's at the uh, AFTRA Foundation Building, 247 West 54. Now, you have to register so you can go to the website and see registration details. But we want to support Courtney B. Vance. He's uh, been very close to us across the years, and we want to make sure that we give him all the support that we can. Don't forget now, are the mobile units outside? So you can go out and get your booster shots, your initial shots, and any other kind of shot you need <laughs> so that we can defeat this pandemic, this COVID pandemic. Amen.
And now it's time for us to begin to focus on our tithes and offerings. Uh, Deacon, I want to thank Deacon Celestine V. Miller Harris uh, for her very generous contribution. I got stuck here. For her very generous contribution. And I want to say this. Next Sunday, beloved, we will have hymnals and Bibles in the pews. And uh, they are here at the church already. And uh, I want to thank several people. Forrest Murphy, I said earlier, he's in the Isabel Nursing Home, and Annie Petrus. Now, Sister Annie Petrus and Brother Forrest Murphy gave the first $5,000 to get the new hymnals here in the church. So if you're listening, Annie Petrus, thank you. Forrest, again, thank you. And Sister Nan Perrier, who has relocated and now lives in Virginia, she also gave a significant amount of money so that we could get the hymnals here in the church. So I want to thank them and all of you for your consistent and steady support of our church. This helps us to keep our legacy rolling along. And these are beautiful hymnals, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and we're looking forward to singing from them next Sunday. And I want to thank the congregation for embracing our new online giving platform, PushPay. Thank you. And now it's time to text Abby, A-B-Y, at 77977 so that you can give. You notice we're not passing the plates anymore. Our giving is electronic, which is a huge step forward. Our trustees have been working hard on this, and we encourage you to go to Push Pay. You'll have the ability to view and print your giving statement, update and manage your information, and going forward, ministries will be able to plan and coordinate events. So that's Abby, A-B-Y at 77977. And if you're having difficulty, please contact Carmesha Peak in the church office at extension 216. Amen. Amen. And many of our members continue to give. I just, you know, every now and then I look at the mail that comes in. I'm just curious. And uh, Marva Allen is out there. Marva, we love you. If you're not in church, you're watching. Thank you. And Earl and Myrtle Tully. I don't know, they may not be in church this morning. But I'm glad to see so many of you here, by the way. Uh, but I want to thank them. This is just in passing. And Brother Thomas Gilliam, who now uh, lives uh, a lot in Chicago. But Brother Thomas, I want to thank you for your contribution to the church. Now, Brother Gilliam has got a matching thing going on. And if he gives a certain amount of money, then his employer gives a certain amount of money. Now, Gilliam is retired, but he still manages to have a good relationship with his employer. So he has given $10,000. Now, you know what that means. That means that doubles, right? And, beloved, that helps. And so thank you, Brother Thomas. And uh, somebody, Brian, you heard me mention about the, uh, about the uh, elevator and those brothers and sisters who, can't, who are not as ambulatory as they used to be. Well, I want to thank you for sending your note, and we're working on making sure we are able to accommodate more and more of our members. So, now, I think, beloved, we may be through with these announcements. Amen. If you're visiting with us this morning, we didn't have your name earlier, but you're here as a visitor. Please stand wherever you may be. All visitors stand there too. Wow. Reach out, Abyssinian, and say hello. Tell them God loves them and so do we. We want to welcome all of you to our church this morning. Uh, from wherever, and thank you for visiting with us. Take our love back to your home. Again, wherever that may be, tell the people we said God loves them, and so do we. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
All right, Brother Chairman, we good? Sister Chair, we good? All right. Let's open our Bibles now to the Gospel according to Luke, the 19th chapter. And, beloved, let's start at the 28th verse. I'm with the New King James Version of the book this morning, Biblos Bible book, the book. Luke 19, beginning at verse 28. Now, I want to tell you that I'd like for you to read the whole 19th chapter. I'll be referring to it in its entirety, the 19th chapter of Luke, in the message. But I'd like you to read it and a little bit of the 18th. Uh, they kind of hold together. But Luke 19, beginning at verse 28. When he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass... When he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mountain called Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village opposite you, where as you enter you will find a coat tied on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you loosing it? Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went their way and found it just as he had said to them. But as they were lo loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosing the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of him. Then they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes on the colt, and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then, as he was drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven, glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Jesus, now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will build up an embankment around you, surround you and close you in on every side and level you and your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. Ah, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. And just for your information, beloved, there is a passage in the Old Testament that I want you to look at when you get a chance. It's Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. You won't get to it before I do right now. But it begins at the 19th verse. He says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, and that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him. He is your life 
and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them. Let's keep that. Choose life. Beloved, our choir will come now with our meditation, and then we will explore the word of God together. Let the church say amen. amen.
follows closely behind the meditation. There's a stranger in town. Somewhere over in the Gospel of Matthew, as Jesus was approaching Jerusalem, there was a man who raised an interrogative when he heard the noise coming from the crowd. And this ties in, beloved, to why we have the palms. See, because it's a terrible thing for a man or woman who comes to church on Palm Sunday and leaves with a palm branch in her or his hand and then is stopped by someone on the street and asked, what does that mean? And it's a terrible thing for a Christian not to be able to give a straight and definitive answer. And so this man over in Matthew, not having understood, maybe it's possible that he had not heard. He asked someone when they were speaking of this king, this prophet, this priest, he said, who is this? Who is this? And that's what's going to be asked of you when you display this palm. What's this about? And our response ought to be clear. I started with 19 and I told you I wanted you to read the whole chapter because at the beginning of 19 is a story of a man who when he joined the crowds that were cheering Jesus on could explain very clearly what had happened to him. His name, Zacchaeus. And the Bible says, as Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, now there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector. And he was rich. That's a dangerous thing. Now, beloved, I would rather have money than not have it. But there's something that money does to you. And if you don't have the right standards by which you're living, money can corrupt you. You know, it can destroy you. And uh, Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus because he was missing something in life. He needed something. Money was good, but it wasn't filling all the voids in his life. He needed something else. And so when Jesus came by, he climbed up in a sycamore tree. Well, you can read the rest of the story, but the point is that his first encounter with Jesus changed his life. And therefore, beloved, when the crowds were crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Zacchaeus was right in the crowd, cheering and jumping and shouting and maybe taking off his Ole Cassini suit. 
Do they still make Ole Cassini anymore? <laughs> Shows you how old I am. I <laughs> Taking off his, his best suit and what did the Bible say? They said that they put down their clothes. Now I want you to think about that, beloved. You in here in your Sunday best, and well, you should be. But would you take off that St. John knit and lay it down for a donkey to walk over? God knows what else the donkey might do. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Would you take off that expensive coat with the fur collar, chinchilla if you will, and spread it before a jackass? and thousands of feet trampling over it to give praise to a prophet, to a preacher, if you will. I want you to think deeply about this as you display your palm. What is at the root of all of this? Who is this? And Zacchaeus would say, he is the man who turned my life around. You see, I had been blinded by the world and I thought, that if I possessed enough money, that I would have all that the life on this world could offer. I would be happy. Well, he could say now, I don't care too much for money, huh? Because money can't buy me love. And that man brought love into my life. And I don't care what kind of excuse you can make. It was when, uh, who else was in the crowd? I believe there was a rich young ruler who knew that he needed more in his life. And he came to Jesus and he said, look here, Jesus, uh, I got everything I need. Uh, uh, what else do I need in order to gain eternal life? Jesus said, uh, 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 worship the Lord thy God with all heart, mind, and soul. He said, I do all of that already. He said, he looked at him, he said, then go sell all that you have and come and follow me. Poor old man had, the poor young man had to walk away because his possessions were what? Great. Beloved, he was in the crowd because at some point he discovered that there was more to life than his money. So he had a palm on, if you will, or he waved his palm or he put down his rich garments because Jesus was worthy because he filled a void in his life. Who else was in the crowd? A young woman, beautiful, gorgeous, sensual. They caught her in the act of adultery. And they were about to take her life. Y'all ought to be careful out here. They were going to stone her, and no one would come to her aid except this itinerant preacher whose name was Jesus. And he came along and he saved her life, literally. And he accused the Johns, if you will. If you don't have any sin, cast the stone. And they walked away, they had to. He had condemned them. She was in that crowd. She was waving that palm. She was testifying because she didn't want the rocks to cry out. She was testifying what God had done for her. Now, beloved, this is not so much for those who are coming to church for the first time. This is not so much for those who are searching. It could be. But this is for those of you who have been here a great deal of the time. This is for those of you who come to church every Sunday. Who is this? Lily of the valley. Who is this? Bread of heaven. Who is this? Water of life. Who is this spirit that pervades us? His name is Jesus. And now the question is posed when they see your palm. What did he do for you? That's the story. That's those of you in the crowd. That's those of you. You may not have to take off your best suit, but you've got your palm on. And somebody... It could be your grandchildren. Somebody, it could be your son or your daughter. 
somebody, your mother, your father, somebody, your sister, your brother, somebody that poured drunk on the street. Why you got that palm on? What does it mean to you? What's your story? In the words of a song, do you have a testimony? What has God done for you? Permit me now, beloved, just for a brief few moments. About a year ago, I got a diagnosis from the doctor. The doctor told me that it would be a blessing, a true miracle, if I made it beyond six to nine months. It shocked me. It scared me. And I must tell you the truth, beloved. Until you come face to face, And the only thing that I had was the faith that I had come up with across all of my life. And with that faith, with whatever words I could find from this book, I met the challenge knowing that if I live, I live with the Lord. If I die, I die with the Lord. Whether I live or whether I die, I am with the Lord. Your faith is what makes you whole. What's your testimony? What's your testimony? What is your testimony? Why do you have the palm on? Why do you wear it? Why do you wave it? Why are you in the crowd knowing that the crowd is fickle? Knowing that the crowd is fickle. I suppose Peter was in the crowd. <laughs> he might have been scared, but he was there. <laughs> Several days later, the crowd is fickle. I don't know him. I don't, I've never seen him, but who is he? Judas, my God, take off the palm, put it in your pocket. Hmm? Who is this? Who is Jesus for you? And I'm telling you, beloved, for those of you who've been in the church for a while, I want you to hear me. This is your testimony. Don't, don't, don't walk around growling, looking ugly all the time, <laughs> mad with the world, if the Lord has done something for you. You were a single parent. You didn't know how you were going to make it. No husband, no wife, whatever the case may be. You didn't know if you were going to, you, you were living in an apartment, you couldn't even pay the rent. You didn't know what you were going to do. But you had a grandmother, you had an aunt, you had a, a mother of the church, you had a father, you had a barber, you had an uncle. And they used to tell you all the time, trust in the Lord. And the Lord did what? made a way for you. That's your testimony. You're not supposed to keep that to yourself. You're supposed to share that with the world. Who is this? Put down your palms in his way. I don't care about old raggedy coat with a fur collar, chinchilla though it may be. He did more for me than that coat will ever do. We were in church yesterday. I'm gonna tell you what makes this so special. Reese lost his sister. I don't know if she was a member, but Reese and came and said, Reverend, we want to have the service at the church. Yeah, of course, Steve. The church was nicely filled. A lot of people, a lot of friends. But the diaconate was here. And I noticed something that when they stood, I saw one of our deacons, but Chestnut, as a fact, he was standing, you know, trying to keep everything cool. But when the deacons stood, they all came together and walked right up next to him. Stood up tall. Beloved, that's the greatest testimony, one of them that I've ever seen. Your being here this morning is a testimony to the goodness of God. The choir behind us is a testimony to God's goodness. Listen. The men and women who will serve us is a testimony to God's goodness. 
And we need that. Think about that family who lost that lovely young woman. And I'm brokenhearted because of her transition. Rodney, is that you? But I tell you, beloved, what about the young man who was responsible for that? He should be punished. But my God, what is going on? Our testimony needs to be our outreach to that community. He was going to Jerusalem. Look at this. And when he got there, near Jerusalem, he hadn't gone in yet. He said this in verses 41 or so. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept. If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace. What makes for peace? Fellowship makes for peace. Bringing in those who have not been loved, those who have not been touched by a spirit of fellowship and friendship. Bringing in the young who are wandering aimlessly and without guide through the streets of New York. What makes for peace? Making sure through the pantry that people have enough to eat from day to day. What makes for peace? Being clear that young children can learn from teachers who are rooted in the word of God and who love them with the love of God so that even if they don't get compassion at home, they will get it in the classroom. And these are our strange and beautiful children. They're challenging. They don't have the education that you have. Some of you have been blessed. You got an education at a time when this country was changing and the marching feet, that's why I'm behind Barbara so strongly, were changing things. Some of you got a break because you were athletes and you could go off to school and you got a decent education. But some of our children don't have those privileges. That's why you give the scholarship committee. That's why this is the testimony. This is our legacy. This is our fellowship. Who is this? And it all stems from Jesus. It's a spirit, beloved. And we have to pass it on from generation to generation. I'm not going to back up. I'm standing strong on what I believe. I believe that the church and its fellowship is primary in our community. I believe that strong families a primary in our community. I believe that men who read the word of God, primary in our community. That's not to discount women, but I believe, brothers, that more of us need to be involved in the application of the word in our lives and in our families' lives. Who is this? He said, this is Jesus. This is Mary's baby. This is the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. Who is this? This is my Lord and Savior. See, I was once strung out on heroin, and I heard somebody named Jesus. All the preacher didn't represent him, but the word did. And I decided that I was going to make Jesus my choice. Now, that was 30 years ago. That needle hadn't been in my arm since. I'm clean now, and I'm a new person in Jesus. Listen to me. I used to drink heavily. I had troubles in my life. I was pouring the alcohol down my throat like no one could believe, and I had a good job. I was one of those first African Americans appointed. I had a high life. And I went to church one Sunday because my wife thought that maybe she could help me. And I heard the word, and I decided to make Jesus my choice. I, I was confused, beloved. I, I, I had a good home, and I had a good family, but a slick-talking, smooth voice, <laughs> slim, trim young man came my way. My husband had started to grow bald, his belly was getting a little round, and we just didn't go out like we used to. 
but he invited me out one day. I stole from my lunch break. I can't make this stuff up. <laughs> and I met him at a nice little restaurant. I lost my husband, my baby, and now old slick talking, smooth voice is gone. I can't find him. Mm hmm. My husband, he's singing by the time she gets to Phoenix. <laughs> What's your testimony, beloved? I can't make this up. It's just 50 years. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Of being in this struggle. It's, it's equally distributed among us all. Some with good jobs, some with no jobs. Some coming up from the bottom, some dropping down from the top. It's all here, and we are here shouting Hosanna with our palms on because a man named Jesus came into our lives. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Yeah, beloved. Who is this? King of my life, I crown thee now. Ride on, King Jesus. No man can hinder you. I lay down my life for you because you saved my life. You brought me out of a pit of miry clay and set my feet on a rock to stay. I love you, Lord, because you've been good to me. And I want to tell the world I wear this palm because of my Lord. And today I cry out, Hosanna. Now I know tomorrow I'm going to start a whole nother thing. But right now, so I can keep these stones from crying out, I want you all to know that I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He pitied my every moan. Now as long as I live and trouble rise, I'll hasten to his throne. I love the Lord because he's been good to me. And so, beloved, I set before you today huh? life and death. I set before you today the choice. And I ask you, in the name of Jesus, choose life. Come unto the Lord. And any of you out there today who have not made Jesus your choice, who doesn't know Maybe you're asking, who is this? I've tried in just a few words to tell you. He is Jesus, my Lord and Savior, who being equal with God, thought it not robbery to be one with God. And he left his throne on high and took on the form of a servant, uh, a servant who was obedient, obedient even unto death. And that's why God gave him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord of Lords. The doors of the church are open. We invite you to come. If you're here this morning, we want you to come. If you want to turn your life around, we want you to come. If you're here, come, beloved, wherever you are, from wherever you are. Don't stay in the pew. Give your life to God. Make the choice today. Don't, don't worry about what anybody else will say. This is between you and the Lord. The Spirit of God is with you. For those of you who are watching, you can email us, member at abyssinian.org, and we invite you to come. So the doors of our church are open. Come on, show our sisters some love. Show our brothers some love. Encourage their hearts.
doors of our church are open. We want you to be here with us. We want you to experience the fellowship, beloved, of being with us today. Stand still and look up. God is going to show up. He is standing by. Don't be discouraged. Why do you wear the palm? There's healing for your sorrow. There's healing for your sorrow. Hold your power. Healing for your pain. Wave your palm. Give your testimony. Give thanks to God. The Lord saved your marriage. The Lord saved your children. The Lord saved you. My witness is not the only one of those of you who've been brought from a far place in terms of illness, in terms of suffering and pain. There are many of you and you don't, you haven't yet got to the point where you can just let yourself go and tell the story. But you gotta do it, beloved. More people need to hear your witness. They need to hear your testimony by how the Lord has brought you over. So I don't want you to be ashamed and let these palms carry them with you. Wear them a job, just like you know people wear the ash on it. Wear the palm. And if somebody happens to ask you, you don't have to go and tell them. Just if they say, well, what's that palm about? You get that in church on Sunday, then you can break it on down. They just open the door a little bit, then you just run on through it. You know? Say, yeah, man, you know, let me tell you what the Lord did for me. You may not want to give them all the details, but you might want to break it down. They've been good to me. And that might bring them to church next time. You never know. So I, I want you to give testimony, give thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Y'all look good. You're beginning to fill in. And I like that. For those of you at home, we're beginning to fill in. And that's, that's, that's just wonderful. That's just wonderful. That's just wonderful. So now, last thing. Uh, Hopkins, you're an organ. 
Is he still up there? All right, thank you, Hopkins. Gregory Hopkins, beloved. James Hall, thank you, brother. God bless you. E.J., LeVon, Kevin, thank you all the time. You know that. Courtney, God bless you. And our ever-present ever -present brother here. What's his name, y'all? Love Frederick Cokes. <laughs> Now I think our minds are clear. Are we good? Now, uh, I'm told that the choir is going to recess. Is that right? What y'all going to recess on? Right on King Jesus? It's got that kind of... Huh? Debbie? Debbie, De where's Debbie? Debbie Dixon. She's right here. Oh. Well, Debbie, welcome to the church, and God bless you, and thank you for singing. Uh, to who? Carol Dixon. Carl. Carl. Where's Carl Dixon? Oh, that's your sister. Oh, yeah, Carl, you've been up there cutting up a long time. I said, That's your sister. I said she was, she was kind of encouraging me in the sermon, so thank you, minister. All right, that is. All right, so we're going to go out to ride on King Jesus. And uh, let's hang with the choir now until they get out. Don't nobody make any fast moves, all right? Uh-oh. Looks like it's getting ready to get down. Right on. You know, that's a, that's a good thing. I like that. That's good for us, you know, because that's the way we like to see our king come in, you know, something like that. Right on, King G. Yeah. Mm.
I don't know if we are still on uh, broadcast. We are. Well, the choir did all right today, and I love the closing in and the recession. Tuesday at 11 a.m., please meet me here, those of you who can, with the Reverend William Barber in the Poor People's Campaign. Please, this is very important. Midterm elections are coming, and you know we have a deep interest in what happens. And we have a U.S. Senator from the state of Georgia that we want to see reelected. And um, we have a black woman that we want to see become governor of that state, too. So we've celebrated Katanji Brown. And the one thing that we must remember is that no matter what obstacles they put, thank you, no matter what obstacles they put in our path, we must overcome them and vote. There's no question about that. We must overcome them and vote. All minds are clear. Let us bow our heads in prayer. And now may the power of God, the love of Christ Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us all now, henceforth and forevermore, world without end. Amen. Your generous contributions help support the mission of the Abyssinian Church. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've changed our online giving platform to PushPay. Simply text ABBY to 77977. That's ABBY, A-B-Y, to 77977. Or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give by Zelle through your bank account at 917-710-7933. You can mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and your generosity. We encourage you to be in prayer for members of our faith community requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones who are sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names will appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. An Abyssinian's virtual noonday Bible study with Reverend Pamela Mason will take place tomorrow, Monday, April the 11th at noon. Please see on your screen join details. This information is also posted at abyssinian.org. The final Bible study of the 2022 Lenten season takes place on Wednesday, April the 13th this has been a season of Bible study, prayer, and fasting. We've offered scriptures to strengthen your witness of Christ and prayer starters, all of which are posted at abyssinian.org. We invite you to join us and let us pray 
weekly conference call. This prayer line will take place Thursday, April the 14th at 7 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. Please see Zoom and dial in details on your screen and by visiting the church's website under Worship Services. And sisters and brothers, we encourage each of you to participate in the 2022 Holy Week services. See Holy Week special services on your screen now and by visiting the church's website, abyssinian.org. Immediately following this morning's worship service, our Sunday School Ministry will present a Palm Sunday program. Their production will take place in the vestry, so you can watch the program in person, or you can tune in via Zoom. See access details on your screen now. Join Abyssinian Deacon Dr. Henry McCurtis as we learn to identify the target symptoms of depression and anxiety and develop key strengths to make these symptoms less severe. You can tune into these conversations on Wednesday, April the 20th and April 27th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Join details are on your screen and by visiting the church's website, abyssinian.org. Live in concert, the Abyssinian Baptist Church presents Grammy-nominated chamber ensemble Amani Wins as a part of the Gateway Music Festival on Thursday, April the 21st at 7.30 p.m. You don't want to miss the Amani Wins return to Abyssinian, featuring our very own member, Monica Ellis. This performance is free and open to the public, but tickets are required. Visit abyssinian.org to register and to reserve your seat. We wish you a very powerful Holy Week ahead. Your generous contributions help support the mission of the Abyssinian Church. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've changed our online giving platform to PushPay. Simply text ABBY to 77977. That's ABBY, A-B-Y, to 77977 or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give by Zelle through your bank account at 917-710-7933. You can mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and your generosity. We encourage you to be in prayer for members of our faith community requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones who are sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names will appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. An Abyssinian's virtual noonday Bible study with Reverend Pamela Mason will take place tomorrow, Monday, April the 11th at noon. Please see on your screen join details. This information is also posted at abyssinian.org. The final Bible study of the 2022 Lenten season takes place on Wednesday, April the 13th this has been a season of Bible study, prayer, and fasting. We've offered scriptures to strengthen your witness of Christ and prayer starters, all of which are posted at abyssinian.org.
We invite you to join us and Let Us Pray weekly conference call. This prayer line will take place Thursday, April the 14th at 7 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. Please see Zoom and dial in details on your screen and by visiting the church's website under Worship Services. And sisters and brothers, we encourage each of you to participate in the 2022 Holy Week services. See Holy Week special services on your screen now and by visiting the church's website, abyssinian.org. Immediately following this morning's worship service, our Sunday School Ministry will present a Palm Sunday program. Their production will take place in the vestry, so you can watch the program in person, or you can tune in via Zoom. See access details on your screen now. Join Abyssinian Deacon Dr. Henry McCurtis as we learn to identify the target symptoms of depression and anxiety and develop key strengths to make these symptoms less severe. You can tune into these conversations on Wednesday, April the 20th and April 27th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Join details are on your screen and by visiting the church's website, abyssinian.org. And live in concert, the Abyssinian Baptist Church presents Grammy-nominated chamber ensemble Amani Wins as a part of the Gateway Music Festival on Thursday, April the 21st at 7.30 p.m. You don't want to miss the Amani's Wins return to Abyssinian, featuring our very own member, Monica Ellis. This performance is free and open to the public, but tickets are required. Visit abyssinian.org to register and to reserve your seat. Your generous contributions help support the mission of the Abyssinian Church. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've changed our online giving platform to PushPay. Simply text ABBY to 77977. That's ABBY, A-B-Y, to 77977. Or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give by Zelle through your bank account at 917-710-7933. You can mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and your generosity. We encourage you to be in prayer for members of our faith community requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones who are sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names will appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. An Abyssinian's virtual noonday Bible study with Reverend Pamela Mason will take place tomorrow, Monday, April the 11th at noon. Please see on your screen join details. This information is also posted at abyssinian.org. The final Bible study of the 2022 Lenten season takes place on Wednesday, April the 13th. This has been a season of Bible study, prayer, and fasting. We've offered scriptures to strengthen your witness of Christ and prayer starters, all of which are posted at abyssinian.org. 
and live in concert, the Abyssinian Baptist Church presents Grammy-nominated chamber ensemble Amani Wins as a part of the Gateway Music Festival on Thursday, April the 21st at 7.30 p.m. You don't want to miss the Amani Wins return to Abyssinian, featuring our very own member, Monica Ellis. This performance is free and open to the public, but tickets are required. Visit abyssinian.org to register and to reserve your seat. We wish you a very powerful Holy Week ahead.